All right, hello and welcome to the Gooners Pod, Mike. It's been a while. Yeah. I know this is becoming a bit of a uh, every once in a while type of thing right now, but uh, you know, I'm 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 happy with that. We're two as of the time of this taping, uh, which is prior to the Man City game. I know anyone that's watching this will be seeing it after the Man City. We are undefeated in two matches. We are on a roll. Right now. <laughs> Chicken to ass, but. Let's without any further ado. Today we have only the third active professional athlete ever to join us on the podcast. We've had retired legends, but as far as active professionals go, this is our third. Andy, can you name the other two? I can't. I was just like Lee Judges. Uh, no, he's not active in any way, shape, or form. Here's one of them. Uh, at the time, uh, good old Wayne Shaw, the roly poly uh goalie who was uh, the backup goalkeeper for Sutton United at the time. And then the other one, of course, is three-time Ballon d'Or winner Joey Murphy. Uh, oh. So we're excited to welcome onto the podcast. He's a talented young footballer. He's the Colorado, uh, Colorado Rapids' youngest ever signing. He's a midfielder who uh, Andy and I have been talking about it. We like to call kind of a combination of Mesut Ozil and Patrick Vieira, uh, <laughs> but with more energy and skill. Paul Bass, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> thank you very much. I uh, appreciate you guys having me on. Can't hey, wait thank, to get this thanks for joining us. Going. He's 18 years old and already more mature and experienced than the two of us put together. Yep. Um, I have to ask before we really dig in, uh, Andy claims that if I have not claimed training – if it wasn't for his training and encouragement since you were five years old, that you'd be playing basketball today instead of football. <laughs> Dude, has, he hasn't exactly taken credit, but he hasn't not exactly taken yeah. credit either for being the player you are today. So is there any truth to that? Tell us about the genesis with, with you and Andy. Never said that. Uh, Besides, I mean, maybe, 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 yeah, maybe I met him early on and I just didn't know it. And he yeah. was going to help me get into, get into playing football. But You know what, Cole? Uh, all the kids I've ever coached, that's exactly what they say, which is weird. <laughs> yeah. But when they under uh, hypnotherapy, they're like, oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> now, I do remember that guy. I remember seeing Cole probably, man, you got to be, this would be 13 or 14. And I just remember one of the directors, Russell Finch, says, mm -hmm. just go over and watch this kid, right? So two fields over. It was basically, I don't know, there's got to be 30 kids out there training. Cole versus 30. And it was just like the, was it like that we, Neymar video where there was like a hundred Chinese you kids? Could just, <laughs> you could just tell it's it was like um you could tell you can tell when a kid's got it, and then you can tell when like the kid should not be on the field with everyone else, and that was it. And so, dude, to just to be able to say that we were at Rush together and just see him, just awesome. Just awesome. Um that's a we very different story than what you told me, but we'll, <laughs> You're such a we'll dick. allow it. Cool, I, I, I looked at your profile on the Rapids website, and a uh, few interesting things. First, you're 5'11", I'm 5'11", we're basically <laughs> twins. Um, it has a section for real name, the Colorado yeah. Rapids, and your real name, turns out it is Cole Bassett. Uh, yeah. Have you ever considered, like, Bassettino or, or <laughs> you know? No, I mean, my, my original last name is Bassiakos. Oh. Like my my grandpa had that, but then uh, he decided to change it to back. Is, there, it is there some? Is there a Greek heritage? Yeah, or? Greek. Yeah, Greek uh, and Italian, but that came from Greece. So um, I'm going to Greece, Italy, place. in the next oh, week, okay. and uh, and I will search for your ancestors. <laughs> yeah, do it. Go Go Udine, Udine, and uh, Athens. Awesome, man. Um, Lastly, it says you got cut from your soccer team at age 13. Was that high school mm -hmm. soccer or, or was it no, this a, was, a travel? This was at Rush, actually. So You know who uh, else got cut from, from, uh, from youth sports? Michael Jordan. Yeah. Well, I thought you were going to say me, and I was going to say <laughs> that, that, that case is well. still in the courts. So. <laughs> it's still in the courts. <laughs> so it's you and Michael Jordan. I mean, that you know that you, Michael Jordan, and me, we're like triplets. Wait, what team did you get cut from, Cole? Uh, Rush. So when Rush decided to make a U14 Academy, um, they had tryouts and like all my teammates made it, but I was one of the younger ones. So they decided that I wasn't good enough for some for the team. So it was right after you came over to watch him on the pitch, they thought yeah. they were <laughs> you. Who was the coach? Can you, do you want to share oh, that? Okay. <laughs> we're going there. I mean, I, I can share it because I mean, he was my coach for the next four years beyond that actually. And he's kind of the coach that helped me get to where I am today. And 
to be honest, I think he made the right decision. Um, even though I do think I should have been on the team, like if if that didn't happen, I probably wouldn't be where I am. It wasn't Jair, kinda, was it? No, nah, no, I love Jair. It was uh, Eric Boucher. Um, uh, he was yeah. the coach. Um, but after that, I mean, he I was his captain the next year uh, on the team. It, it took a year to kind of get into that team, but then the next year I was his captain, and then he brought me over to the Rapids with him and um, made me a starter on his team there and kind of helped me get or gave me a platform to jump into the first team. Mike, the Boucher family basically ran – rush for quite some time now they're they run it from quebec or were they uh no they now i think they're rapids mostly and cam's yeah. up in washington right yeah and, uh, his brother sean is at shattuck st mary's yeah. he runs that program up there yeah and, i keep in i keep in touch with cam every once in a while but mm-hmm. um so cole tell us a little bit about how you became an arsenal fan was it mm-hmm. FIFA related, like what? What kind of drew you? Was there a specific player? Like, because for most young kids, you're like, oh, I played FIFA. I mean, Hector Bellerin just came out and said that's why I signed for the club. <laughs> I played FIFA. But what made you a Gooner? No, it was, uh, look at that room. I mean, it, it, this is not yeah. a, a trumped up thing. Look at the room that he's sitting in right yeah. now. It was uh, Cesc Fabregas when he was coming through. It was mm-hmm. kind of when he was like starting to become the captain because I was a little bit too young when he was breaking through at the start to. Uh, watch watch the game i was still into other sports at the time but um once he started coming through as a captain and then jack wilshire started coming through like pretty soon after that was kind of what um triggered me to start watching them and then for some odd reason um i have a walcott jersey from a while back i don't know why i chose him maybe it was just because he was fast this was when i was like 11 or 12 but um that kind of team that was in the champions league every year um and I have a Walcott jersey from when I was 39, <laughs> and it doesn't yeah. fit anymore. So, Andy, that's another narrative that 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 it's that, that you were responsible for him being uh, you know involved in Arsenal as well. I just oh yeah, I forgot I told you that I made him an Arsenal fan. Yeah, he's just walking around the field, in Colorado. So, Cole, let's let's jump back to April. We connected at the event where Arsenal announced they were playing the Rapids. You told yeah. me it was your dream to play against them. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it like preparing and readying for the match in July, like getting ready for it? Because I think when we talked after the game, you said I had to like beg to actually play in the match. Yeah. Or aren't you going to get benched? So what was it like in that preparation leading up to it? Yeah, so we actually had an MLS game on the Sunday, and the Arsenal game was on a Tuesday. So I started the MLS game on the Sunday. <laughs> Good picture. Um, and. <laughs> So I was pretty, I was pretty tired from that. I think yeah. <laughs> he was recording a message for my neighbor who is in love yeah, with him, yeah. who's yeah, twelve, the younger, younger yeah. kid. Yeah. Why yeah. is your tongue sticking out, Andy? Under under those teeth, though. Like, <laughs> tongue for <him. laughs> if, you, if you zoom in really, really close, you can see his. Paul is already like regretting this. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, I didn't mean to jump on your answer, Cole. But by, by no, the way, good. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, yeah, so we had we had a game on Sunday, and uh, all the starters from that game weren't even on the bench for the, for the Arsenal game. But I think the coaches knew that I was a pretty big fan of Arsenal, and it's always been a dream of mine to play against them. So I had to kind of ask for the on the flight home from Portland, and then the next day after, I was like, "You gotta at least let me play 45." Like I'm 18, my body recovers pretty fast, so. <laughs> Uh, I got the first 45 in, which was nice. And then they had to take me out at halftime to get ready for the game on the weekend. But I was pretty stoked that I got to play at least 45. You said after the match, the quality was just unreal. So tell us a little bit about that, because you're essentially playing against some kids who were close to you in age. Like, what was it just like? There were guys we had never heard of that were playing for Arsenal that day. Uh, Yeah. One of them scored a pretty incredible goal, actually. But... uh, James Olayinka, he was on the. He just traveled with the team actually for the Europa League game, which is I think his first appearance on the yeah. bench. Yeah, yeah. So what was it like, like getting out there? And I think you said one of the first times you saw their touch and move, it was just off the charts. Yeah, I mean, when I kind of like when you're expecting you're playing against Arsenal, obviously you want to play against like the biggest players. So, I mean, I think I've experienced a bit of that now um, from the training over there, but. That first game, uh, just the the kids, because they come in hungry. It's they're they're trying to prove that they deserve to be there in preseason. So, 
all of them were trying to show to Unai that they deserve to be there. So, I mean, a lot of those guys are up and coming in there. I mean, Saka started in that game, and now he's a regular in the first-team mm. squad. Martinelli, that was his first ever start and goal, and now he's doing pretty well for the team. So there was guys in that game that are uh, have a lot of good quality. And the, the main thing for me that um, is the difference between here and there is just everybody is so good on the ball. Like, I was more – surprised at how good like the defenders were on the ball you know, like compared to over here in america like the youth defenders like i don't know do you know zach medley yeah mm-hmm. he played in that game like over there um training with them like these these center backs can do like he's so many tricks boy, on the ball. yeah he's very big uh, like they can just pull out tricks on the ball that like s- some players over here like as midfielders can't even do so that was kind of the big difference for me um You've had this phenomenal rise from such a young age. The trial with Arsenal, let's jump to that. Um, we're not going to ask you, like we have a friend named Tom Canton who's this rising journalist who wanted to know how did it go. But like, <laughs> yes. we're, we're like come up with some really deep uh, probing questions. And he's like, he's like, ask him how the training was. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get to that, tell us a little bit how the trial came about. Like, mm-hmm. did it take months to get to this point? Like, did, did it your, begin in July when? Yeah, when they like were over. Like, how them? did the whole process work? And yeah. stuff you can't share with us, don't. But mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about how the the trial. When did you get that call? And okay, um, yeah, it started in that that game in July because uh, <laughs> they had all their scouts there, and I was asking my GM if he could kind of sit down with them and see like obviously i'm probably not at arsenal first team quality yet but i think i definitely can get there so i was having him sit down (laughs) um i mean they've been better in recent games at least second half of west ham but uh i had him sit down with ed do and uh, a couple of the other scouts and ask what i need to work on and they thought i did pretty well in the friendly but they thought i had a couple things to work on so they invited me over um I think it was around October after our season ended. My GM started talking to them about the possibility of coming over and happened pretty quick. It was only like two or three weeks and they kind of set it up. So I got to go over there um, and or start of November, I guess. November was 11th. Week, two weeks that you were? Uh, two weeks, yeah. Wow. Got there on a Monday and stayed um, that whole week and then to the next Saturday. But I got to, I missed the Southampton match, which I was pretty mad about because it, mm. it was international break, so I didn't get to see any games while I was there, which mm. yeah, kind of sucked. Suck. So walk us through the process, like when you arrive in London, do Arsenal pick you up? Do you have to like? Because I know a lot of our listeners are going to want to know like the deep. Yeah, they want to live by like from through. airport. Like, how does the whole process work? Yeah, so I arrived at the airport, and then they had a guy with my name waiting uh, outside the area. So it was a driver. A, like he, I guess, it just says Bass, and they're holding a sign. Yeah. Uh, I guess they have a driving company that they, they use to bring players around. Um, so they brought me to my host family, which is kind of a house that um, <clears throat> they keep a lot of players that are in the academy or go on trial there. So, like, Robbie Burton, that midfielder, he used to stay there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think James Olyinka has been there as well. So, I stayed with them. Um, it was a lovely family. And then, uh, yeah, I mean. How, how did one get to be that? I'm, I want to move over there and be a host. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. not sure, to be honest. I really I mean, don't know. If you, Andy and I are going to be a host family. We're going to leave our real families and become a host family. <laughs> like, you read about that a lot, though. Like, Beckham's book, they, they talk about – quite often like these young players will travel and they'll stay with one specific family. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, you have a relationship with them. I think he still celebrates like holidays with them, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. So you trained solely with the under 23s. I know it was an international break. Did you get any mixture in with the first team? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Uh, They had a scrimmage on the Friday, the first Friday I got there. So a couple of us got to go up to the first team and it was like a nine V nine scrimmage that we got to do. So uh, I was pretty excited about that uh, just because even though they didn't have like a bombing there, there's still Lacazette, Ozil, Beller and Tierney, all those guys. So uh, they it was very fun. They just kind of like desensitized to, Oh, this is another, another kid that's in for two weeks. I mean, do they, do they, do they like 
invest their time in in chatting, or is it just kind of a off off limits thing? Uh, not the first team guys, because like the, so at Colney they have a setup where like the twenty threes are kind of on on the other side of the hallway from the first team. So I was in the twenty threes locker room, so you don't really get to talk to the first team guys. And when I showed up for training, like they're all just coming out to train, so like they say hi and stuff, but like they're not really asking uh, anything. Yeah, the communication is on the pitch. It's not. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, I mean, Hector Bellerin was probably the one that communicated the most with me. Like he he talked to me a bit, but uh, most of the guys, because once you get out there, you you kind of like ready for training. It's a bit different than over here. Like over here at Rapids, we take about twenty five minutes to warm up uh, outside, but these guys do all their stuff inside, and then once mm. they get outside, they're ready to train. Well, I, I saw an interview that you gave to the Rapids website when you came back that uh, that I personally was very interested in. Apparently, between the time you woke up and the time you started training, you had two separate breakfasts. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and this is the kind of thing that stands out for me. I mean, I you know, football aside, as a guy who normally likes to have three separate breakfasts <laughs> uh, before I train, I, you know, I thought that was uh, fascinating. So what, what is the breakfast spread at Colney like? I mean, we need to talk about people wanting to live vicariously. This is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Any uh, bagels? <laughs> no, there wasn't any bagels. So at Colney, it was it was eggs and uh, beans with toast is like the main little area, and then they've got the fruit and that, that. They're like full. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, there is. I don't know what it was. It was pretty good though. Like I've never thought I'm gonna eat beans for breakfast, like beans with toast. But I actually enjoyed it. Uh, and then they've got fruit and yogurt on the side as well. How much were you freaking out? during the process of like being dropped off at Colney to walking onto the training pitch, like as an Arsenal fan supporter, this is your dream. Like what's the freak out level Cole from like one to 10? Uh, that I'll tell you that it was a 10 when I went with the first team. Cause that, that was pretty, the first 10 minutes of that, I was really you nervous focus on the, the, the job. I mean, how, how does one like move all the, the, freak out factor out because I mean, you can't be standing there like just yeah, people exactly. watching while you're out on the pitch. Well, I know because they had Freddie watching, Unai watching. I mean, Steve Bold and the U23 coaches were watching. I, then there was a ton of press and media over in the corner. Like I was trying to see if I could get on Sky Sports over there. Stand, <laughs> like try to stand next to Ozil, see if you can get on TV. Um, Good strategy. But, yeah, but there was, there was a lot of people. So the first like 10 minutes, I was just trying to play simple, to be honest. Like just get the ball and move it because I didn't which I probably shouldn't do, but that's that's how I got uh, got into the game. And then uh, after a bit, I actually like started to feel more comfortable. So it just became natural. And then you just want to win, win the game. Show well, at any so. point you take a pass from a first team player and think, oh shit, Ozil just passed me the ball or Bellerin. Yeah. Was there like that yeah. moment in your mind yeah. where you're like, yeah, those those first ten minutes really like. Uh, passing to Lacazette especially yeah like he he was the the nine and I was the 10 so he was just passing back to me as the kickoff and I was like I can't believe I watch this guy every week on tv and now I'm training with him and he, he's playing me the ball so that was pretty crazy um, so even tight. with the U23s though like just because I've seen Steve Bold on the sideline with Wenger uh, when he was there so seeing that was my coach like the first training with him like first five minutes I was like this is crazy that now I'm getting coached by him. But once you get into the training or game, you, you kind of just gain confidence and then it, it's fun. Like you just try to enjoy it and do what you do best. How hands-on are they with you, the the different coaches that were overseeing? Did, do they give you instruction during it or do they just kind of let you play? And Because I assume all the coaches will, will say, there's Cole, try a list. And they all know the first 20 to 30, you're not the Cole that you think, as you said, like I was just trying to be simple, right? They were going to give you that time to come out of your shell. So how much instruction are you given? In uh, the 23 is actually a fair amount. Like obviously that was a bit not as much nerve wracking as uh, the the first team. Yeah, That was actually the one session that I, I can't believe they took pictures on. That's the U18. They had me do a recovery session with them. And I was like, out of all the days <laughs> that you, you choose to take pictures, you, you chose the U18. Yeah, where's your picture um, of you getting a pass from Lacazette? That's what I, that's what. Yeah, no, that's what, that's what I said. I was like, did you get any first team um, or even just 23s? But that was the day that they first team and 23s had off, and they just wanted me to do regen with these guys. But yeah, anyways, um, it, it it was uh, there was a bit of instruction like 
well, with Boldy and uh, the assistant coach. Um, they help me out a lot. Uh, like those guys were trying to give me stuff. What? Is per Murdersacker involved in the. Uh, he, he, he normally is. He was he was away scouting because it was international break, I think. And then when he got back, I left, which so I didn't get to see Per, but um, the assistant Ryan Gary, I think is his last name. Uh, if I pronounce that wrong, that's my bad. But he's he's a really intelligent guy. Um, him and Boldy kind of they they were really good at giving you instructions and trying to teach you stuff. Uh, so he's while, no while dummy, is what you're saying. These guys. Yeah, no, these guys are very smart. And then with the first team, Freddie Lundberg came up to me uh, like during one of the water breaks and he was kind of telling me just just be yourself, like go out there and try to create stuff for the team, go score a goal. Um, and he was kind of giving me positioning stuff on how to get the ball better, which was nice because that kind of just made me a bit more confident in, in the training. So that, that, was, that was good from Freddie. And now to see he's the head coach, it's pretty cool. Did you have a freak out moment? Because I know when we met Perez in April, we were both having kind of like that freak yeah. out moment. So when you're sitting there getting told by club legend, like, are you actually in the moment or does part of your mind go, holy shit, this is Freddie Lindsberg? I just don't, I didn't hear the first 10 seconds of what he told me. <laughs> yeah, it, it was like that. And <clears throat> I think the, the it also hit me, he came up in the meal room during breakfast. Like that was the first time I saw him and he came up and said, hi, I'm Freddie. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Like, I, like it just there's so many legends just around the club because like so many people like to stay connected with it mm -hmm. so like you get to meet so many people like uh, if, he, if ian wright hadn't been in the jungle at the time he probably would have been there. I know. so and, uh, roy, roy parlor was there as well at the stadium. Well. Yeah. so like these guys just walk past you and you're like it is crazy how much you get to see all these people Quick uh, note to anybody that's uh, that's listening rather than watching on YouTube. We we've been sharing pictures of Cole's time over in in London. Um, we have uh, the visual of Cole in his room at home, which is just an Arsenal laden room. So if you uh, you know this is one that uh, that you might want to tune into on YouTube and 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 have a watch because uh, there, there's some good stuff going on. Just wanted to point that out. And we had an incredible picture of Wayne Shaw earlier that uh, that couldn't be missed. So just and, jumping in with that. And me. And you. Uh, now, so, you, you talked about having fun. Do, do, do they train you how to celebrate goals? Uh, I mean, I watched a goal celebration that you scored for the Rapids against L.A. in the MLS, um, and the knee slide was on point. I have to give you props for that. Mike loves uh, a good knee slide. Yeah. I do love a good knee slide. It's something that you, you just – you can't be taught. It's either in you or it's not. But, I mean, but can you try – were you teaching the Arsenal U23s on knee slides, and, and where did you pick up that technique? I don't well my first goal that I scored this season I tried the knee slide in Orlando and it didn't work out so well I kind of like turned my body and uh, I didn't get the full effect so I tried it again in LA and it worked uh, they actually do like after training with the U23s like they will do like some finishing stuff and those guys do actually like they'll they'll go and do the knee slide if they score on the keeper like they're they're pretty into their celebrations like Tyrese John Jules he, he loves like a basically just like kind of give the keeper a look and he'll be like, <laughs> like when, Andy, when Andy scored, I, I heard that he, when he scored and he was a goalie, so it wasn't that often, but uh, when he scored, he would do the worm. <laughs> he would just, and, uh, and that's why they put him at goal. Cause they're like, we can't handle this anymore. We so get cool. a demonstration on live TV. Or uh, no, no, I'm still, <laughs> I'm, I'm eight weeks out of knee surgery. I, I need more time to recover. Cole, tell us a little bit about the quality of training between like the Rapids and Arsenal, like you had mentioned a little bit about kind of the differences, but just from like a session of like, like, why well, can't I think of the word? Um, just break down like how different it is. Like, is it, is it fairly close to professional clubs or is one more intense than the other? I mean, obviously the, the Arsenal first team, I don't think I've ever been so tired after a training session just because of Emery's style of wanting to press all the time. Uh -huh. um, as a midfielder in that training, I don't think I've ever ran so much. So that was definitely the most intense, intense session that I've been a part of. But, I mean, the MLS, the league's starting to grow, and I think our starting 11 is starting to get pretty good within the Rapids. So uh, comparison to the 23s, maybe it's a bit better. And I think uh, the coaches knew that because I was kind of asking um, – like, what's the difference? Like, do you think these 23 players have a better shot of getting to certain places? And 
they think that maybe MLS, because you're within the first team, so you, you, you're playing against men every day, so you might have a bit of an advantage to play against 23s every day. But uh, the 23s, I would say overall, those guys are so good on the ball, like every single player. There's, there's not one player in there that is not uh, good technically. And I'd say that's the biggest difference to over here because we have guys, maybe not in our first team, but like at their like 18, 19 age, and they're just not nearly as good on the ball as they are. You know, I think that's a good lead into a question we got from Joel Foster, um, who asked why Arsenal don't take more advantage of the relationship between Arsenal and Colorado. I mean, obviously, uh, KSE owns both. Um, he says, wouldn't it make a lot more sense for certain loan players to get first team experience or move players who are no longer at their level uh, to play in the EPL to come to Colorado? And, and then he specifically points out a guy like Eddie Nketiah. Had he gone there instead of Leeds, he would have been able to control his playing time and increase the popularity of the younger players of Arsenal in the U.S. So, you know, you've you've mentioned the training differences, but is why isn't there more of a – I mean, we know Manchester City does it with their New York club. Uh, which is a little uh, controversial in some ways, but why isn't there more of kind of an exchange program between the two clubs, you think? I'm not sure. I mean, I hope it grows in the next couple of years because I definitely want to be like the the starter to get the jump over there, at least yeah. on this side. Um, but I, I would see it as beneficial. I mean, Man City, their left back now, Angelino, he came over and played uh, a year at NYSCFC, so – it's not, maybe not right for all players because MLS is kind of a weird league to adapt to. It's it's different than most leagues, and uh, you're so far away from England, like Eddie and Ketchum. Calendar. Yeah, Calendar he's an hour something. away. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, I mean, it could be beneficial because you are playing against men every week, and if, if we were to bring somebody in and make them a starter, it, it would probably help a lot, and it could build the relationship between the two clubs. But uh, I'm hoping it starts from our side going over there as well. Uh, I think this was the first time that somebody's trained over there, but hopefully like an actual move over there can uh, spark a better relationship. And, and the other way around too. I mean, th thanks Joel for the question. Um, obviously your trip to Arsenal came at a pretty interesting time in the club's recent history. Um, yeah. I'm wondering, you know, it, it on at Colney on the training ground, especially with it being during the international break, is there a little bit of insulation from everything that was going on at that time where, you know, as it turned out, was the final weeks of Emery's uh, reign there. What was the general feel, if you can tell us, around the club, around the staff? Uh, you know, coaching change hadn't happened yet, but did, did you get any kind of a sense of the aura? Was there negativity? Was there nothing? What was? Uh, I mean, obviously, I didn't get to see the first team all the time, but at least when I was there, it wasn't very negative at all. Uh, these guys definitely wanted to improve, and the Unai was like they were listening to Unai. They were trying to learn the because like, every single week you can learn something. So they were trying to learn his system uh, every day, and at least in the training, they were they were very intense on winning and <clears throat> doing their job. So I think there there didn't seem like there was any negativity, um, at least from what I saw, especially like with the U23s. Those guys are doing very well in their league as well. I think they're second or third. So. All those guys were very happy, and um, every day they would come in uh, with with a good feeling, good vibe. Um, so that that was a very, at least when I was there, I felt like it was um, at least where I was. It, there wasn't much negativity. There was a lot of positivity, but I obviously wasn't on the inside in their first team locker room. You went through a coaching change at Rapids mid season. Mm -hmm. How quick is the change on the training ground? Like. Because we keep hearing all these rumors that, you know, I mean, literally Freddie had three days and then two games around those. So just from like a perspective of how quick did, does it change on the training pitch when the old manager leaves to new manager? Is it like a slow embedment of the new tactics or were you guys at Rapids just like full in with something new? Um, at least with us at Rapids, it was kind of just a more defensive style. We decided to sit in a lower block and try to counter. Because uh -huh. we, we knew we were good at that, and we thought we were opening ourselves up too much. So, I mean, our first two games with our new manager, we lost both of those. But then uh, our third game, we won, and then we went on, like, an unbeaten streak in nine games after that. So it took a bit of time. Like, maybe, I mean, we got a draw at Norwich, and then uh, we lost the second game to Brighton. But then now we're, we're unbeaten in two, and you never know. Like, a win this weekend versus Man City could really spark something for the team. 
So kind of I think it, it really just takes one game, in my opinion, um, especially under a new manager, because then you start believing that uh, you like. I don't know what it, it's different with Arsenal because they've they've won a lot of games this year, uh, even though it doesn't seem as much as the fans want. But with us, we ended up won in eleven games, and then right. we finally got our first win, and just that feeling of a win kind of sparked us uh, to keep going, and we stayed undefeated for nine or ten games. So. The, just that feeling of getting a win and trusting what the coach was doing kind of propelled us to better things. And maybe over there, with the win versus West Ham coming back. Now, now the first team players kind of have a trust in Freddie, and, and they can hopefully get some done versus Man City this weekend. Did you get to meet Unai? Did he come over and introduce himself? Yeah, he did. Uh, he comes over every academy kid that's there. He comes over and shakes their hand before the training. Uh, he's a, he's a really nice guy. Like. I mean, I know it was tough the way that the, the last few weeks have went out, but at least when I was there, he was he tried to speak the best English that he could. He came over to everybody and introduced himself to me, at least. And then uh, he told me where I was going to be playing in the style that he wanted before the training session started. So uh, when I was there, I, I at least I liked it. Una. Say yeah. what you want about Unai Emery as a manager. Uh, no one, I don't think, uh, has any issues with him as a person. Um, no. In fact, he may be too nice, too sweet, too whatever to you know to 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 be a, a Premier League manager as it turned out. But we, you know, our interactions with him over the summer were were the same. He just couldn't have been a nicer, uh, you know, nicer person. So, um, so with this two week training, is it the type of thing where it's just kind of an open thing where they might have you over again, or is there a verdict that comes down at some point with, you know, where you hear what the next step is going to be? What how does that work? Um, I mean, I had meetings with them uh, after after the training, and then personally, I'm hoping I can get a chance over there. And I think my agent and GM, uh, I'm going to talk to them on the phone next week and see what the possibilities are. But um, I think I did pretty well over there. Like my honest opinion, I think I had a very good trial uh, over there. So uh, you never know what can happen. I obviously I can't like reveal any uh, like of the inside details, but. Um, that it would be a dream to play over there, and even with the U twenty threes, like if if that's where I would have to start, just trying to work my way up over there would would be very nice. But um, yeah, uh, any any chance or opportunity over there would be a dream. But obviously, right now I have to get prepared for um, preseason with the Rapids, so that's kind of what I'm focused on. But um, you never know what can happen. Andy wanted to know if we were going to be invited to the contract signing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> or, and what percentage of you, like like the South American players, what percentage of you do we uh, do we get? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ten percent. You don't have to answer that. But... <laughs> no, he said ten percent. Uh, We're in. <laughs> okay, cool. Are you familiar with the transfer market website? Have you ever checked this out, Cole? Yeah, yeah I have. Okay. Before some of our team looks at it, just like last year. I remember the younger players we were looking at because we have Tim Howard on our team and. We we're like, oh, we're more expensive than Tim Howard now. You are, yeah, I was just yeah, going to point that out. You are, 40, he's 40 years old. So they, old. they have all of the, the professional footballers, the statistics. Your market value currently listed at $1.48 million, which is higher than anybody else on the team other than, do you know who? Probably I think it's Kellen Acosta. Yeah, Kellen Acosta is a little bit higher, which I think is a mistake, but uh, but we'll say that. You don't have to say that. 1.48 million, Andy, is like it's like a Black Friday, Cyber Monday kind of deal. Because I, I mean, I yeah. I would consider dropping that on you right now, and and uh, you know we can put together our fortunes for Hanukkah. But Cole, <laughs> have, Cole, have you ever played Football Manager? Uh, my teammates actually from England, Jack Price and Tommy Smith, they play it every single plane ride, and like I'll sit next to them and watch it. I've never downloaded it on my computer, but like it seems so fun. Like I actually need to start it. I think I've been playing it since I was like your age. And I told Mike, I should send you the screen image. I tried to sign you for Arsenal, but your wage <laughs> demand was 135,000 pounds a week. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Jesus Christ, this is not the humble kid I know. <laughs> I don't know if I would ask yeah, I mean, you look, look, but you I think know, he I told me that was look, like, B told me that was a glitch in the game that they fixed um, because all like anyone <laughs> under 19 was asking for like obnoxious wage but i was like come on dude i mean let's get the dream going let's not demand these yeah, high wages yeah, yeah exactly. 
you're being compared to Jurgen Eckenlundkamp from Ajax uh, right now, and you know that guy sucks. So I don't know why they're uh, you know why they're. I mean, I've been following that guy. I have dossiers from that guy from Tom Canton going back eight years, and uh, and, and I just disagree with that. But um, but look, it's, so, it's hey, pretty. Let's exciting. actually let's respect Tom as the journalist and Cole. Just you know, how was the trial? <laughs> we want yeah. to ask the question. Yeah. Well, it was it was pretty good, Tom. Um, <laughs> no, just stop there because that's what that's what his question deserves. <laughs> So what is what is your uh, before we get to just a couple of user questions uh, from our users? Uh, what is your preferred position? We know I've read that you're comfortable as an eight, as a six. Mm -hmm. we, we know at Arsenal you you won't be able to play the ten because we already have Lucas Torreira playing there uh, <laughs> for some reason. Where are you most comfortable, or are you flexible? Uh, I mean, I'm pretty flexible, but yeah, more of a attacking eight is probably my best position. I, I love playing the 10, just the way that I can, I like pressing on the defensive sides. Um, so that's kind of a good a position to kind of do that. So personally, I like the 10 where I can kind of free roam and find space. But with the system that we play in Colorado, we have two eights in front of a six. So one of those eights is probably my preferred position. But, I do the math. That's like a 22. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I honestly don't mind, though. Like, if a six gets me on the field, I love being there. Even I've played winger a couple times this year, like an inverted winger, which I like as well. And I, I've scored two, two of the games that I played there, I scored. So, um, yeah, I don't mind any of those positions as long as it gets on, my, on the field. That's great. And, and, and as much as we want you at Arsenal, are you garnering interest from any other clubs? I mean, you and I have spoken off camera about it. But, uh, I mean, are, are you all in on uh, – on Arsenal or, 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 or someone trying to steal you away from us? Uh, I mean, I can't say too much on this one. Um, I would say read Twitter news. Uh, I mean, I know there was there was an offer last year, last summer and uh, winter from from a European club, and um, there there might be a couple more. Who knows? We this just want them to know. We want, we want Arsenal to know that they got to, you know, they can't just sit around and wait. They, <laughs> they got to snap you up. Uh, I'm hoping so as well. Uh, I would really about, like that. How about the U.S. national team setup? I think you, you had a call up to the U20s, uh, yeah. if I read correctly. Uh, I mean, is that something that you have interest in that there's involvement with? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was in the last U20 camp, and there's a U20 camp in January, so I'm hoping to go to that as well. But uh, the last U20 camp was really good. I'm um, pretty sad to see Tab Ramos leave, but uh, he had a good opportunity in Houston to take that head coaching job. So, uh, I'm happy for him, but it, it definitely was pretty fun playing under him. And I thought the last camp, uh, it took me about a year to kind of get settled under Tab and, and try to do well under him. But I felt the last camp, I, I had a pretty good camp and ended up scoring two and assisting one. So it, it was a pretty good camp overall. But um, this year's a big year for us, U20s. We have qualifying for the World Cup and uh, the U23s have qualifying for the Olympics as well. So being in one of those two setups would uh, mean a lot to me. And, and Tim Howard, uh, you've had the chance to play with Tim Howard, Kellen Acosta as well. But, I mean, Tim having a long Premier League career and then coming to Colorado to kind of finish things off. Uh, what Was was there a, a, a relationship between the two of you? I mean, youngest player on the team, oldest yeah. player on the team. Uh, did he give you words of advice? And if those words were given, were they in an English accent or American? <laughs> no, it's, it's all American. He does use British words, but – um, he likes to sit with all the British guys, though. I will say that he was he liked to be with them, and I think he feels a bit British now, but he doesn't really have an accent. As long as it's uh, not yeah. like Brad Friedel, who who <laughs> went from being American boy to being Scouser, and like you know, and and still sounds like that. <laughs> yeah, Brad was actually my uh, assistant coach over at the last camp for the oh, U twenty. So sorry. He, yeah, he he's a good guy, though. Please don't um, tell him I said that. He'll kick my ass. Maybe. maybe Cut it off camera. Um, <laughs> anyways, yeah. Um, he, when I first came into the team, Tim was uh, trying to help. I, I wasn't even in the team yet, but I was training as an academy kid, and I think he saw a bit of potential. So he kind of came up to me after a couple trainings and said, if there's anything he can do to help me, maybe not even get in the Rapids first team, but Europe as well, um, he'd be happy to help. And he wanted to see me do well. And even when I first signed, he kind of, he was one of the guys that took me under his wing and uh, helped me 
kind of I, I became a starter pretty quick last year it only took about a month for those last three games that I started so he was one of the main factors in kind of helping me get there um so and then this year he he was pretty hard on me which uh, I told him to be and that that kind of helped me get me to where I am because I didn't want to be babied anymore I wanted to be treated like, like a proper pro so uh he, he gave me a lot of advice this year but he was also tough on me to try to make me improve wisdom beyond your years I'm telling you that's that's what I'm hearing someone with the with the right mental setup uh in addition to the physical attributes so uh so that's great um Andy, any other things we want to cover before we go to a couple more user questions? Um, I don't think so. No, cool. Cole, did we miss any? Like, did you want to share anything additional about your time over there? Or, um, I mean, I, I think you know, we've covered most of it. Uh, it was How about pretty the great experience. And, Andy yeah. asked about the difference between was, the training. How about the training pitch on Colney versus what you train on over in Colorado? Yeah. So over here in Colorado, we have one training pitch uh, that we use every single day, every or all year long. Or did you train uh, out at Dick's? For or yeah. you do? Yeah. We have a. Andy, watch, watch it. <laughs> um, but over there, I mean, I think most people know how Colney is, but once you actually get into the facility and see what it's like, it is it is crazy. Their gym is one of the biggest gyms. It's like a twenty four hour fitness gym, but it's like for just the team. Like it's that big. And then, I mean, the training pitch, I think they said they had like 12 or something like that. And they're all the best quality you could possibly get. So that difference. Better, better than the pitch where Andy and I did our shootout uh, outside of Dick's uh, back in July. <laughs> where I, where I think it's pretty much not, like not quite. He's, uh, yeah, he's blaming his loss definitely. on a divot on the pitch. So we wouldn't have had that. Can I also play. say that um, like now that we're post that, I, the tear in my leg was legit and I only lost because of that. <laughs> I don't know, man. It was my goalkeeping capabilities, but yeah, the goalkeeper. If, if they come back out this summer, you guys can have a rematch, right? Yeah. Well, user questions from uh, from Jacob Romero at Conifer Gooner. How easy was it to score against our defense? I know it was the U twenty threes, but they can't be much better than the first team. <laughs> In all seriousness, how does the pace of the Arsenal U twenty threes compare with the MLS? I don't. Uh, maybe we've kind of addressed that already. Um, yeah, I mean it is. It's it's a similar pace. I think obviously the MLS has men, so I mean they're a bit more uh, developed physically, so they're going to be a bit faster and more physical than those guys. But on the ball, a lot of those guys, like I said, are are very good technically, so they know how to move the ball very quick. The MLS uh, is a U40 league versus the the, the U23, um, and he said, and, and and Jacob says uh, best all the best for the upcoming season, Cole, and and yeah, come on, thank dinner. you. Yeah, uh, it. From Mike in Virginia, um, are you looking forward to putting Christian Pulisic in your pocket? <laughs> uh, Christian is, I mean, for our young American kids, he's definitely the idol. And I have a teammate that's very good friends with him that's on the national team with him. So I try to maybe hop in a FaceTime call with him uh, every now and then if it's possible. But that guy, what he's doing right now, I, I know it took him a bit at Chelsea, but he's, he's having a pretty good season so far. So I have uh, to say, I, I, I thought it was the wrong move for him. I thought going into that pressure pit with with you know him being essentially the star signing because they couldn't make yeah. other signings and the pace of the end. I didn't back him to to, to succeed. Nope. Um, but hell yeah, so, he's big he shoes to fill filling in for Hazard. So, he's doing it though. He's doing yeah, it. Right. So From I mean, seven, um, go ahead. Yeah, most young kids. If we can get to what he's doing right now, I think we'd be pretty happy with ourselves because he's kind of been the front runner or well I don't know what the word is for it I I'm blanking I haven't been in school in a bit but he's been the trendsetter he, he is what yeah, like yeah, exactly. years ago what everyone looked at Landon Donovan as as far as being able to make a presence overseas I mean he had some good some good times at Everton and a couple yeah. overseas club mostly domestically but Pulisic has just been outstanding yeah. so mm -hmm. um, from Sebi uh, did you choose the number 96 or was it chosen for you no it was chosen for me that's like their, their academy numbers go from like 35 to 90, and that's where it ends. And then they just the gave me the question was, was 69 not available when you just went <laughs> to the reverse? But, uh... No, there's actually there's a good up and coming kid that has that number, Ben Cottrell. I don't know if you've oh, heard of him, yeah. but that's, didn't that's Will have it for a while? Number. I remember uh, someone, someone uh, I two years ago was, was wearing that number, and uh, I was like, that couldn't have been. <laughs> 
Were there any trialists who had three digit numbers? Because I, I mean, I in travel soccer, uh, in travel, and I call it travel soccer because I'm usually talking to Americans about it. But uh, mm-hmm. some of the teams that my son played against had three digit numbers. I, I was like, well, watch out for, league, don't they? Watch out for that number one hundred and fifty two. He's, <laughs> I mean, I'm not having that. Yeah, not not over there. But I mean, yeah, when we played against teams from Mexico at the youth level, uh, all those guys have like numbers in the three hundreds. Like they do it like. First teams like one through thirty, and then I don't know why they go in the three hundreds, but they go pretty high up there. So, yeah, not over there though. Do you know who you open the season against next year? That Colorado yes, Rockets, yeah, they it. came out with our first two games, so we play at DC our first game. That's what I'm we'll, asking you. If you know, about. I I am yeah. from DC, uh, no, for no. better or for worse. Uh, my local club is DC United, so I've marked February 29th on the calendar. Yeah. Are you going to uh, go, Nick? Am I going to go? Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Are you going probably... to wear a Cole Bassett jersey? I, you know, if if uh, I, I might have more loyalty to Cole Bassett at this point than I do to D.C. United, given uh, you know Rooney's gone, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Mesut Ozil could be playing there by that point. You would never know. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It'll be cold AF. But uh, So, will... Cole, with the season starting in a few months, like, are you in – when do you start preseason? Like, when do you get back into the full swing? Uh, I think our first official date that we can return is January 18th. I don't think we uh, go to preseason just then. I think we have a couple of days of testing and stuff like that. But then we'll, we'll head off to preseason then. Um, most of the guys are in doing workouts right now, like some are on their own, but uh, some go into our trainers right now and, and do some workouts. But right now I'm, I'm off because I went an extra month than all the rest of the guys. So uh, I get a week or two off to kind of just chill and relax with family. So um, I'm just trying to enjoy that time now. And then Christmas time, we'll get back, back at it. So you're currently graduated. How is it not having the school – just being able to like just chill. You're just a pro now. It is, yeah, it is pretty nice. I, I mean, my parents want me to get a college degree, but um, I'm I'm trying to see where where this takes me. If it takes me to Europe, I don't think I'll go after it. So college. In the next, yeah. If it happens in the next couple of years, I don't think I'll go to college. Like if I go to Europe pretty soon, because um, I just want to try. You only have one chance to try to become mm-hmm. a top professional in Europe, so I think I need to go after it and. If I want to go back to college, I, I have the rest of my life to do that, even though it costs money this time. Um, I, I still want to take my chances at trying to make it in Europe. So it is pretty nice, though. I'll tell you that, like, coming home and just being able to, like, fully focus on soccer, like doing recovery work and, and trying to just get your body right for the next day. Well, Tuesday nights at the at Golden Goal. Um, so <laughs> oh, yeah. if you ever want to play there, yeah. if you want to get the Love boots on for for co-ed, um, you know we're always in need of subs. I'll text you. <laughs> you you, you yeah. can help test Andy and train him up for our next shootout, uh, so we don't lose embarrassingly. Uh, uh, it's pretty cool though that you guys play at the same spot that uh, I used to play at the NBA, Oh yeah. So, oh yeah, um, it's, um, it is, it's it's pretty. That league's pretty fun, I'll tell you that, with the boards and stuff. Dude, we yeah, were in uh, the men's A-League, which starts next week. We played that a few years back, and it's like all XD1 players, and we had a couple dudes who were 50-plus. And we finished second, but it like it was it was intense. And it's kind of a fun league because people are like, all right, we got to go to work tomorrow so like we're all yeah. gonna be cool no one no one crashes into the boards yeah but the speed like you'd have these kids come home like we had two kids come home from arizona state and they just murked everybody <laughs> i mean they were just next level and it's just like come on like most of us are over 30 let's chill out a little bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, yeah yeah, oh, that sounds fun. I mean, I tried to get my dad into that, but you know, he wasn't having the turf with his knees. Yeah, uh, I'm like struggling. If I want to go back after this last surgery, I'm like, Ugh. hang it up, Andy. We need we need you to make it. Look. We can't have you dying on us or, or having your knee die on us. Yeah, the bitch of it is when I tore it. We were playing up in Boulder outside. It was raining, and we were losing. I don't know. We had like it was like. A team. We were playing a team of Mexicans, so like eighteen of them showed up. It was at five thirty on a Wednesday, and we had like seven. So we're Wait, like, we're down six. The fact that they were Mexican is why eighteen of them showed up. Is that what you're saying? 
For Mike Hernandez's <laughs> reasons, yes. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that right there. Our regular listener, Mike. Hey, we're, uh, never mind. I'm not gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I think we probably should wrap this up. Um, Cole, a pleasure to meet you and talk to you. Uh, we're, we're, you know, I know that and Andy was anyway, but uh, for me, being a relatively new uh, uh, supporter of yours and following your career, it's uh, I'm looking forward to see what what the future holds for you. You're a uh, you're a mature, uh, talented, intelligent kid, and 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 that is a large part of the the you know what what can separate the people who just have talent and the people who make it. So good luck to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and yeah, uh, thank, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, I enjoy it. Sure. Hey, we'll, love, we'll get you. Uh, we'll have to get you back on next time for like a post match where we can like actually talk about the a game and and you can <laughs> you can critique your future teammates and yeah, that sort of you thing. Know. Uh, maybe maybe <clears throat> I'll have to ask the agent about that one, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Awesome. So, um, so if you've enjoyed this, check out. And you haven't checked out our last podcast. It was a one on one with me and Amy Lawrence about her book Eighty Nine. Uh, I really enjoyed that conversation. It's always a thrill to talk to to someone of the stature of, of Amy Lawrence. Um, uh, that's up on our YouTube page. A lot of other podcasts uh, with interesting guests on there as well. Some podcasts with non interesting guests. Uh, in fact, no guests at all. But anyway, uh, check out our Gooner. Uh, GoonerSubscribe.com is our YouTube page. And um, boys, have a, a, a great holiday, whatever you celebrate. I'm assuming it's Christmas. Happy Hanukkah, Mikey. Thank you. I was fishing for that. Um, I'll be on, uh, on travel. I'll actually be at the Chelsea and Manchester United games, but more than likely not on a podcast until after the New Year. So uh, Keep your eyes peeled on our Twitter and and Cole. Uh, your Twitter is what at Cole Bassett. At Cole Bassett nineteen. Okay, at Cole Bassett nineteen. Two S's, two T's, and uh, yep. and uh, thanks for joining us again today. And come on, you Gooners. Yeah, thanks for having me.